God is so wonderful. He is the best in my life. Therefore, I want to love Him with all my heart. Okay, and motivate people to delight in God and to pray. Psalm 37, 4, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your hearts. So here, look at this verse, that here again, God motivates us with His grace. Now, this is in the Old Testament. Even in the Old Testament, God is motivating us with His grace, that He will give you the desires of your heart. That means what you want. Now, of course, that means what you want, you know, uh, according to God's way, in God's way. That is not like, oh, I, I want just more, more money. But when you want more people saved, when you want to live a joyful life, when you have more strength, and your family will be full of love and full of uh, the presence of God, when you ask for blessings like that, when, because with the presence of God, we have all kinds of blessings. So we should all understand that. All blessings come from God. When God is present in a certain place, when God is, you know, is present in a powerful way, then we have all kinds of blessings. So I hope that we understand that. How can we get the desires of our heart? It's by delighting in the Lord. Delighting in the Lord. So what is God's nature here? God's nature here is that also He is abundant. He has everything. He has everything in His hand and He's generous. It is, uh, he, he is generous to give to us. And He observes those who delight in Him. Uh, now in the last verse, another point about God is He observes those who love Him. He knows who loves Him. And here in this verse, He knows who delight in Him. And also it's God who put the delight in the heart. That first, God has created so many wonderful things. He has done so many wonderful things. He has moved in our hearts so that we will, will delight in God, that we can see the good things of God. So it's God who created the wonderful things so that we can delight in Him. Also, God will work in our hearts so that we don't just believe in Him, but we will delight in God, that we'll be happy about God. And then when we're happy about God, then He will bless us. Now, some people, they just delight themselves with pleasure, with food. Now, when we delight ourselves with food, we should say, it's God who created the food. We should think of every good thing come from God. So, it's God who gives us all these good things. So, I want to count the blessings of God and say, you know, God gives me good food and I want to thank God when I eat. Then you're delighting yourself in the food and the Creator who created the food. So we count all the blessings. Uh, he has a wonderful plan to save us. He sent Jesus Christ to die for us. He sent His Holy Spirit to draw us to Him. He sent Christians to bring us to, to believe in Jesus. He uses the church and the Bible to teach us to love God. And His Holy Spirit moves in us. Even when we sin, He continues to move in us to draw us back to Him. And He gave us strength and spiritual gifts. He gave us joy. He gave us opportunity to serve Him. And He remember all the good things we have done for Him. And He reward us. So all these things God has done for us. And we, so we say so many good things. And He created the world so beautiful, so wonderful for us to enjoy. He also created heaven, which is much more wonderful than this world. It's so much more beautiful. There's no more, no sin. And no death, no condemnation there. And, uh, and that, you know, actually at the beginning when God created the world, it was very, very beautiful. It's just after Adam and Eve sinned and then sin came in the world and then the world is corrupted and has all kinds of problems. But or God's original creation was very good. Now even now, after the fall, the creation is still very beautiful. So we thank God for all this and we delight ourselves in God. Now, for myself, every day, when I wake up, immediately I say, God is wonderful. Hallelujah. I like God. I like God. I always say, not just I worship God. I say, I like God. God is so good. I like God. I like you, Lord. I delight in you. I'm happy about you. I'm happy to have you. I'm happy to be, be your child. I'm happy to serve you. So, I always delight in God. Now, I have met Christians, they say, it's hard for me to, 
to praise God and delight in God because he said there's so many bad things in our lives. Now they have to examine their lives. Do they live in the joy of the Lord? Do they live, you know, that they have the strength from the Lord? Because many people have not learned how to have strength from the Lord. They just ask for things. They just thought, I believe in Jesus and that's it. They didn't know that when we love Him more, when we obey Him, when we serve Him, when we live in His presence, when we continue to worship Him and praise Him with our spirit and our soul, God is happy with us and we have more joy. When we have more joy, then we'll attract people to believe in Jesus. And the family will have more joy and then there will be more joy in the family and blessings in the family. So that is how we should live. And that way, we ourselves will be blessed, our family will be blessed, our ministry will be blessed when we delight in God. Okay? And then, um, this is another verse, to motivate us to delight in God and to pray. In Isaiah 58, 14, Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. So when we delight ourselves in the Lord, He will cause us to ride on the heights of the earth. That will be uh, in high places. That means we, our life will go to a high level. That our life will go to a, you know, a uh, high level of His plan that our whole life will be blessed by God. We'll go to a high level. And then He will bless us with the heritage uh, of Jacob, that the, all the things God promised to Jacob, to Israel, He will give to us. He will give us all the, the heritage, all the promise, promised blessings to Jacob will be given to us. So I hope we all delight in God. So God is full of goodness of every kind. When we delight ourselves in God, He will cause us to ride on the heights of the earth and give us the heritage of Jacob. That means He will lift our lives to a high level and bless us. So he, here the nature of God is that He has everything in His hand. He can cause us to go to a high level. Even when people don't have, you know, some people say, I don't have much resource. I don't have much wisdom. I don't have much education. But when they have the joy of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, God can still raise them up to a high level. So, for anyone, when we love Him, when we delight in Him, that He will lift our lives to a high level, that we'll have the wisdom of God, that we'll have the strength of the Lord, we'll have ways to glorify God, and God will be happy with us. So, it's very important for us to delight in God and teach people to delight in God. That, uh, so, in our teachings, we should always talk about the goodness of God and, and share what God and good, what God, uh, good things God has done in our lives and always tell people how wonderful God is. God is doing all these wonderful things to us. He is blessing us and when we praise Him, He comes with joy and love and freedom and it's wonderful. So also when we preach, we want to be filled with joy and say, oh, it's so wonderful to preach the Word of God that I can enjoy the Word of God when I preach the Word of God. God has so many wonderful promises. I, I delight in Him. I delight in serving God. I delight in encouraging people, telling people God wants to bless them. And then when they receive the blessings of God, they are happy and I'm happy. So then we are happy all the way in our spiritual life, in our daily life, and also in our uh, ministry to bless other people. And three, praising God and rejoicing in Him are the best thing that we can do. So to, to rejoice in God, to delight in God. So when we praise Him and rejoice in Him, God has so many good things. So I hope that uh, in your daily life you always do that and lead your family members to always also do that and say, God is so wonderful. God is so wonderful. God is so wonderful. He created so many wonderful things. He has given us joy and strength and freedom is so wonderful, so I enjoy God, I like God, I delight in God. When I delight in God, God will give me the desires of my heart, and God will cause me to go right on the heights of the earth, and He will cause me to go to a higher level. So this way, then we are always joyful, and the joy comes from the Lord. When we are joyful because of the Lord, the Lord will bless us more. So I hope this will 
encourage you. Okay, so that was to encourage people to love God and to delight in God. And here, to motivate people to pray with faith. Now, many people pray like this. Oh God, I need healing. I need money. Please, please help me. Come quickly, come quickly. Why don't you come quickly? So, that way is saying, is saying, oh God, you're too late. You, you're too slow to bless me. Instead, we should have confidence God is blessing us and we want to count the blessings all the time. Now, I want to explain what faith is. In 2 Corinthians 1 20, for all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. So, all the promises of God in, in Jesus are yes. So, he, it's always yes that the good things will come to us that He will give us great things. He will bless our life. It's always yes. The promises will always come true. And in Him, Amen. Amen means true. You know, it's, it's always true. To the glory of God through us. It, this is for the glory of God that the promises will come true. And uh, through us, through our life, through our uh, joy and our love that God's... Uh, God's name be glorified. Now here I explain what faith is. God promised, then I believe. And I relax. And I trust God totally. Because God promised. He said, when we love Him, He'll prepare for things eyes have not seen. And I believe that. And so I relax. I don't have to worry about anything. I can relax. And I can trust Him totally. And God is good. God is good and gracious. So I believe and I relax and I trust totally. So I hope you remember this. God promised, I believe. I relax. I trust totally. That is faith. Faith. Now some people think faith is like this. I have to believe very hard. I have to believe. I have to make myself believe very hard. Now if you have a very good father, he's always nice to you. You don't have to make yourself believe, I have to believe, I have to believe that He's really nice to me. We'll believe very naturally. So if we count the blessings of God, we'll believe very naturally. He does fulfill His promises. That all the Christians who love God, when they praise God and worship God and obey God and serve God, they find that God really responds. God really blessed them. So we will say, what God promised, He'll do. Whatever He promised, He'll do. Therefore, I will relax in Him. And I have confidence in Him. I don't worry about anything. So this is confidence. That when we pray, you know, we don't worry. Will God help me? Will God give me the best things? We just say, when we love God, the more we love God, the more He'll prepare wonderful things for my life. So we, then we, we don't have to worry about anything. That is, that is faith. So faith is relaxed. It's, it's saying, God is so trustworthy. I relax and I trust in God. So I hope you all trust in God like that. When we pray, don't just pray as if He's not answering. Pray in a, in a way that, to believe that He's working right now and He wants to give blessings. I've seen many people pray, they think that they have to pray like this in order to, to have blessings and have uh, revival. This is how they pray. They'll say, Oh God, we need revival. We need revival. Come Lord, come Lord, bring revival. It's like trying to, you know, drag God. It's, it's, it, the way they pray is like, God is not zealous for revival. God is, you know, not working hard and God is too laid back. He, he, he is not really bringing the revival. And so we have to convince God, come, come, come and bless us. Actually, I want to say this. God always wants to give blessings to us. He always wants to revive us. It's just us who stop His revival. When we love Him and trust in Him and re joy, rejoice in Him and relax in Him and trust in His goodness, when we do that, our, already our lives will have revival that will have more joy and more blessings and more strength to serve Him. Already, we'll be, 
our life will be transformed right away when we start to to trust in him and love him he wants to give us blessings so i use an illustration god always wants to bring blessings it's just us whether we are open to receive the blessings or sometimes some people are not open they're not open so they don't receive the blessings so it's not prayer is not to convince god to give us blessings or to bring revival prayer is to open our hearts so that we'll receive his blessings and his revival prayer is to believe in god trust in god i know god is going to do great things in our lives god wants to bless us god wants to do great things so i told people how to pray for revival to say lord you want to bring revival please help us to repent of our sins please help us to put down our lukewarmness Help us to love you and trust in you, to believe that you want to bring a revival. And today, when we totally love you and obey you and serve you and have a good relationship with you, then you work in our life to change our life. You transform our life and give us more and more strength and more and more joy. And you change our life and you bring revival. You want to bring revival. It's just us who stops you. So please help us to receive the revival to receive changes in our life to be transformed by by your presence to be transformed by your love so that way then our life will be changed and will you will have revival and so everyone here who hears this message and if you every day if you start to love god serve god glorify god and be happy with god every day you do that then every day you are strengthened every day you'll be you know, are blessed by God and you have the blessings of God and you'll be uh, uh, rewarded by God all the time and, and revival will come to you, blessings will come to you. So I hope that you believe that God wants to give us all these blessings. It's God who wants to give us revival and blessings. It's just people who stop it. So we want to tell people we have so many good things. We have so many good things in God. We just trust in Him. And then we'll have more and more blessings. Okay? Motivate people to pray. Matthew 6, 8. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. So the Father already knows the things we need. So we, um, when we pray, you know, it's, it's not to inform the Father what we need. Now we can inform Him, but... We don't have to keep telling him many, many times. Uh, tell, uh, some people say, oh, I, I have a serious sickness. I have, I have pain. I have a lot of pain. I have pain in the stomach. I have pain in the head. I have pain everywhere. I cannot sleep. Oh, please help me. And they just keep telling God what they need. We don't need to tell God what we need because God already knows that God knows the things we ha you have need of. So instead, we can say we love God. Lord, I love you, I worship you, I adore you. And I know that when I love you and adore you and I delight in you, you will bring healing to my body. You will help me to, me, to, to bring, bring me more comfort, bring me more health and strength. Lord, we need you, we need you, we praise you, we thank you, we worship you, we adore you. It's so wonderful to have God. God is so wonderful to have you. We need you, we need you. Father, we need you, we need you, we, we worship you. So it's is to pray for needs we don't have to keep telling him now what is the nature of god and his grace here his nature is that he's all-knowing he knows our needs and he cares about our needs and he will give us what we need so we don't have to worry we don't have to doubt we can trust in god and he is happy with those who love him and adore him and obey him and he'll bless them greatly So, the nature of God, He owns everything in the universe. Everything in the universe belongs to Him. And God knows our needs. He's all-knowing. God cares about the sparrows. He will care about us much more. So, His grace is, even to the sparrow, He, he cares about the sparrows. And we don't have to keep telling God about our needs. When we love and obey God, He will give the best to us. So, he's, He will give us the best when we... When we love Him and obey Him. So, it's very important that we have this attitude of faith in God, trust in God. 
faith is basically is because of God's goodness. Because He is good, therefore we have faith in Him. That, um, that we know that He will for sure bless us. That when we love Him and obey Him, for sure He will bless us. So we don't need to keep telling Him. But when we love Him and obey Him and worship Him and serve Him, then He will bless our life. First, He will bless us with His joy and His strength and His health. And then He will bless every area of our life. And He will provide for those who, who love Him and serve Him and honor Him and delight in Him. Okay, Zephaniah 3.17 He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Now here it tells us how God will respond to us and also how God looks at us. He will take great delight in you. He is happy with you. Now of course this is talking about Christians who, who follow God, who love God. And He will quiet you with His love. He will soothe you with His love. That He always pour His love upon us. You know, the more we pray and have confidence, when we pray, we don't have to shout in order to get God's blessings. Now, it's okay to shout, but we don't have to shout to get the blessings of God. I noticed many people, they pray like this. It's always shouting, Oh God, pour your blessing upon us. Pour your love upon us. Oh, come, 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 Lord Jesus. It's like Jesus is not coming. We must understand prayer is helping ourselves to open our heart to God. It's God who wants to bless us. When we understand this, then the attitude in the prayer is totally different. Then the mind is not to convince God, but to open our heart. So when we pray, we learn to open the heart and say, God, I believe. Very important to believe. I believe that you are loving me now. You want to bless me now, and you rejoice over me when I am praying to you, when I'm praising you. You are rejoicing over me, me with singing, that you are rejoicing over me now. You are happy over me now when I trust in you, when I worship you, when I adore you. You are very, very happy with me. So, when we understand God's He is rejoicing over us with singing, He is singing over us, then we can say, wow. God is so happy, so happy when we come to Him. Therefore, we can pray with confidence. So prayer is opening our heart and say, God, I know that You want to bless me. You are happy with me. You are pouring Your blessings upon me. You, are, you, you, are, you want to bless me. You want to bring blessings to me. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. You are so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. You're so kind. You're so good. So, when we understand this, that is God is happy over us. He is, His joy comes from us too. You know, of course, He Himself has joy. He has the nature of joy. But His joy also comes from us. When we worship Him and adore Him, God is jumping with joy. He's shouting with joy. He's singing with joy. So that's the nature of God. The nature of God is He's a joyful God and He's observant. He notices His people. Whenever His people loves Him, He notices that. And then He will be very, very happy and He will pour His joy upon His children. So one area, one thing we can experience when we pray with an open heart is we can experience His joy more and more. You notice that when you worship God with a free spirit, when you say, Lord, you are happy over me. You are rejoicing over me. Now, I hope you all pray like this. When you pray, when you pray, when you lead a worship, when you lead worship, we want to lead the people to understand God is very happy now. So we can say, God is happy with us now. God is rejoicing over us now when we worship Him wholeheartedly. When we love Him with all our hearts, God is very, very happy. God is rejoicing over us. God is jumping with joy. God is singing over us. He is very happy with us right now. So that is how we encourage people. So when we lead worship, we can say, Oh God, you're so wonderful. You're happy with us now. You are singing over us now. You are smiling at us now. You are so such a happy God. And you are very happy when your children come to you. When we come to you, you are very happy. And you bless us. You will strengthen us. You will give us blessings. 
So this is how we pray when we have confidence that anytime God will rejoice over us with singing, especially when we love Him and adore Him, and we are joyful because of God. So God is joyful. God is a joyful God. And He's the source of joy. So this is His nature, His inner quality. When we build a relationship with God, He will be very happy with us and give us the best. That He will give us, He will rejoice over us, He's happy with us and give us the best. Now this is from the other passages like 1 Corinthians 2, 9. He will prepare for those who love Him, things that I, the heart, human heart cannot think of. And God enjoys the relationship with us. He enjoys the relationship so He will rejoice over us with singing. So in our prayers, it's more important to, to trust in His love and to love Him. So it's more important to trust in His love. God, you're loving me. You're rejoicing over me now. You're happy with me now. You are blessing me now. So that way we'll have more strength. So I hope it will change your way of prayer. So instead of just asking for things, we should be declaring God's goodness and His grace. Now pay attention to this. We should be declaring God's goodness and grace. We should be declaring God is good to us. God is happy over us. When we love Him, He is very happy. He is happy with, He is rejoicing over us with singing. He is pouring His love upon us. He wants to bless us. So we talk about what God, how God is and what God is doing to our lives. Instead of just talking about, you know, what we need or what we want God to be. Like, you know, God already wants, he, it's Him who always wants to pour the blessings. It's us whether we are open to receive the blessings. So this will encourage us to take delight in Him when we, when we uh, to, to delight in God and then believe that He's delighting in us. And Matthew 6, 30, 33, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now to seek first the kingdom of God, what does that mean? His kingdom is this kingdom of grace, that people are saved by grace through faith. So that means we, we want to bring more people to believe in Jesus. We want to lead more people to, to believe in Jesus. And we pray for people uh, that they will believe in Jesus. And that's the first meaning. The second meaning is where God rules, there is His kingdom. Now for many Christians, they don't obey God totally. Then the kingdom of God is not in His heart. But when He let God be the king, then His heart is, the kingdom of God will stay in His heart. That because there God is the king. When God is the king in our heart, then He will bless us. So when we let Him be the king, then the kingdom of God is in us. So to seek His kingdom means to want to bring more people to Christ, to believe in Jesus, to enter the kingdom of grace. And secondly, to let King be the Lord, be the Lord of our life, the master of our life. That we totally want Him to rule over our life. So it's very important for Christians to understand the reason why we want to obey God. We want to obey God so the kingdom of God stays in our heart. When His kingdom stays in our heart, then all these things will be given to us. So it's not just, okay, I try to obey God in this way, this way, that, that way, but the other way is very hard. Like for some Christians, they have lust. They, they, will, they will obey God in other ways, but for the lust they don't take care of. And they think they, they're quite good. You know, I just have one area of uh, a problem in my life. They didn't realize that when they don't let God take over, you know, take away the lust, then they're not letting God be the king of their life. Then the life is not totally controlled by God. It's not, God is not the king in our hearts. Then, even though, you know, it, it's like this. Now, there are many people who are willing to pray, to read the Bible, to go to church, to praise, uh, even to do evangelism, but they don't want to be nice to their wives. They don't want to forgive the wife and the husband, I mean the husband or the family members or other people, and they don't want to take care of the lust, uh, they don't want to take care of the anger. So they, there are things they like to do, uh, but there are things they don't like to do. Then what happens is, actually, they are not really letting God be the Lord, and 
they are just, you know, the things they can do easier, they will do. But the things they, it's hard, harder for them to do, they don't do.